here and all of these straight lines are false. And if you have faults that intersect, the intersection point would have more water. Why? Because if there is a crack right here, then the, the rock is cracked and is porous, and there is another one in a di different direction. It is also cracked and it's porous, and the intersection between them would be much more porous than either, either side, and therefore there will be plenty of places for water to accumulate. So we look at these kinds of things, and here we see in, in the eastern Sudan, near Port Sudan, you can see the patterns of, uh, of uh, these uh, cracks very clearly that, that would have water because we, uh, we assume geologically, and that's correct, that if you have very high mountains that have cracks in them, the, the rainfall would go in here and the water would go into the cracks and this actually goes right there. And in most cases, it's lost to the sea. So the water can go out in that sea unseen. It has just released like that. And we have uh, we, we figured out that some location like that, and this is the uh, fault line right there. A uh, fault line and cut down by other faults and all of these locations, particularly the intersection between this fault and that uh, wadi, then there will have many, much more water. When we see them, and when we drive in the eastern desert at the borders of it, we can see this much just hills and some places where it's deployed like that. But when you really think about where water might be, you can see cracks like that where water would have accumulated when, with this one right here, whether they are open like that or whether they are solid, but at, at whatever it is, it is certainly a, a situation whereby you can say that both in the absolutely flat areas where sand covers the whole terrain or in areas where you have solid rock that is cracked that allows the, and the cracks will allow water to go through, then this is how you think about it. And that's, as far as I'm concerned, this is one of the best uses of satellite images or, or pictures from space from a variety of sources, whether it is uh, regular photography, whether color film, or whether it is, it is UV or IR or, or radar. What, what we get out of it is a better picture on the way the terrain used to be in the past, and therefore we'll be able to figure out if there is water here, where would it be accumulated and why, and therefore we can be able to get it for, uh, for use today. Thank you very much. All these preliminaries are required. <laughs> okay. Right. Now, I'm uh, going to begin by pointing out, as all of you know better than I do, how important Islamic history and science has been. And am I speaking to the right... Okay. It began with maths, mathematics, and without mathematics there's no science. It was invented by, in Islam, Islamic countries. You don't have to read it all, but you know this very well. And not only mathematics, but what it leads to, 
Astronomy also came about through work in Islamic countries with facilities but with thinking, with understanding of what is observed and it presented the foundation for European science and European astronomy in particular and certainly the means of calculating things in science through the mathematics. So there's a, ma a basic foundation in, from Islamic science that we all now benefit from and it's been referred to in history by famous astronomers and famous scientists. So building on that I can give you a lecture and this is about astronomy which is modern but of course it requires all of the history and the development that there's been in the past but here's a picture of the Sun and of course what we have with it and when you look at the Sun a bit more closely often you'll see it yourself sunspots now the Sun seems to be stable and bright and so on but if you look in detail the sunspots are darker and there's also structure which is due to convection and slightly cooler regions which are darker and brighter regions which are hotter on the sun and this is active all the time and if you look at the hot part of the sun which is outside the white globe you see up to two million degrees it's extremely energetic and not at all like you imagine and this is what produces the solar storms we see and particles come from the sun so the sun is extremely active it seems to be the same every day but there's a lot going on there's a lot going on inside too now here's a again in our solar system um, the earth and the moon that's the moon and uh, if you look at the rest of it there's the planets Mercury, Venus, Earth that's there we Mars, Jupiter enormous planets here these are mostly gas this was called a planet Pluto it's no longer it's an asteroid it's arguable what you would call it it's certainly got, it's got a moon of its own as well Jupiter has four moons big ones seen by Galileo first and we visited these with, with, with spacecraft. Um, we've visited Mars with spacecraft. But most of the universe, we can't do that to. The nearest galaxy to us is two million, two and a half million light years away. So what we have to do in astronomy is to try and understand the universe is to use the light or electromagnetic radiation which is all of the concept of light um, and the observed laws of physics to gain understanding we need the combination and it's not a matter of guessing there's evidence for it all so we take light right well, which we could call light in general that's our own light that we can see uh, gamma rays to radio and short wavelengths that is to longer wavelengths and you see hot gas very energetic objects black holes stars in general cold gas all of this is now not perfected because we never will be perfect but we've taken it to a very high level and the, the simplest sort of light source is just a hot body and here's one where the visible range that we can see peaks and of course this is the spectrum of the Sun we've grown to accommodate to this and the wavelengths that one sees short for gamma here are ours two radio waves here microwaves in your oven but also in radio astronomy so this is what we see in the simplest of objects just hot things but if one takes what one generally sees in the sky you have the hot things like this by the way this is a spectrograph very simple just a prism I'll show you a more complex one later and uh, with this you can spread the light out like this in the, into its colors but if one looks at hot gas 
you see s very small regions of light. And if you look at cold gas with this hot object behind it, the light coming through, the same lines are dark. Now this is due to the atomic nature of matter. So a nucleus has electrons around it. This is a very simple model, the Bohr model of the atom. And transitions in the positions of the electrons can be changed by absorbing light when they jump up to a higher energy and then they fall down again. And when they fall down, they emit the light that represents the energy difference. So you see the bright lines. This particular one is hydrogen and there's very specific lines from hydrogen. If one looks at other elements, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, and so on, mercury, neon, then each one has its own signature. And this enables us to see in the whole universe what elements there are wherever they are. And also how energetic is the material from which this light comes because you could see the balance of these lines changing when they jump up and down and so on. And therefore most of our evidence from our telescopes comes not from the images, which are fantastic, but from the way we analyze the light. Now, the picture of electrons in an atom is actually not true. <laughs> it's a model. Uh, what we use in practice is quantum mechanics and a, a photon, a particle of light, isn't in a posi particular position. It's a probability for it. And the atom then doesn't look like it's got electrons going around but sort of clouds. And we work in quantum mechanics for all our real work. But I must tell you that nobody understands quantum mechanics. What we know what to do with it is how to use it, but the mind cannot grasp it. For example, one can work in ten dimensions, impossible to realize. But even so, one can manipulate data and uh, physical evidence in the mathematics without understanding what is actually